Perfect. So thank you very much. Um, I'm Christian. And I'm Jan. And we are from FISEC. Uh, it's an IoT security company from Bochum. And we developed a solution which is um, approaching the BSI compliances, uh, which are regulated by the BSI in Germany. So today we will present you a solution which is not just fitting the market, because metering is an interesting market, which is not uh, um, using a nice technology like LuraVan, but it's also um, able to sustain and to stay in the market because it's uh, based on the regulations or fulfills the regulations. So in Germany, we have a law which is called the Messstellenbetriebsgesetz, which means <coughs> um, like a meter operation law. And when you want to um, do metering in Germany, then you have to follow the law. Yeah? And the law. Um, um, tells you that you have to communicate with respect to something called a protection profile, which is uh, also known as a common criteria and a technical guideline. And you have to satisfy this. Yeah? So this holds um, specifically for electric meters. Um, when you are above uh, 6 megawatt per year, then it's mandatory to actually use it together with something called Smart Meter Gateway, and uh, also for gas and water, as well as for submetering, it is uh, mentioned in the law that this is something uh, earlier or later, um, uh, this needs to be uh, done in this specific way. So what this means is, when you follow this uh, specification, this guideline for cryptography, for infrastructures of intelligent uh, measuring meters, then you really have to communicate with a VAN security standard. And this means you have to do TLS with uh, specific cipher suits based on brain pool elliptic curves and, uh, for example, two random number generators, as well as some perfect forward secrecy intervals in the worst case of two days. Yeah? So every two days, you have to change the key. Yeah. So the good thing here is these are well-established and standard cryptographic protocols. Yeah, um, uh, um, and uh, actually not only um, required for metering, also for any kind of critical infrastructure uh, environment uh, in, in Germany. And we remember uh, LoRaWAN, it's a WAN communication system, uh, communication standard, so we really have to use this uh, WAN communication. So there are some uh, solutions where the companies say we are also BSI compliant, but they are compliant to the local network area, which is designed for maybe 10 meter communication, walk by, through uh, um, drive by, or fly by solutions, but not for one uh, for one solution. So. <clears throat> so I will take over now. Um, if it gets to the technical stuff, so um, sorry for like only scratching the surface because the time schedule is very tight. But, um, okay. The große grüne. Ah, okay, sorry. So the first thing you, um, you would ask yourself is, how is it even possible to do standard TLS connections via a low bandwidth network that also has like, um, that's also lossy. So you do, not have a, um, you do not have the quality of service for each packet. Some packets may get lost. And um, so the first thing that we do different from TLS is like, um, so if you do TLS and you just, um, you just uh, lose one packet, then it's not possible to decrypt all the, all the other application data. And actually, there's another standard that's called DTLS, Datagram TLS, that we adopted to the LoRaWAN layer um, that allows for packet loss. So if there's a packet that gets lost on its transmission way, um, you, can, you can decrypt all the packets afterwards. And that's a, bit, uh, that's a pretty good thing, because um, you want to like, have application data and not security. Um, so in our solution, what our solution does is we like, establish TLS connection from the meter or from the device into the application backend. So we are agnostic of the LNS. We are just using standard LoRaWAN. And on top of it, we are like, doing a DTLS connection as your browser is doing it with, um, for example, a web server or something. And how do we do that? Um, so that's a pretty high-level description. What we're actually doing is we are using standard DTLS uh, libraries and standard DTLS connection, and we are using standard LoRaWAN. And in the middle of it, we are, have like our own um, 
layer that um, handles fragmentation and reliability to make things work. Um, so the advantage of having standard DTLS is like, or standard uh, cryptographic libraries is they are peer reviewed and the standard LoRaWAN thing is like, we want to, we want to use the LoRaWAN technology as is, so we don't, do not want to um, alter it so that everyone is possible to do their use cases over the same network as well. Um, so, um, so our fragmentation layer then handles uh, in a very clever way the bigger TLS packets, uh, breaks them down. Um, it's like it's considering the different spreading factors, for example, which is like a thing in LoRaWAN, but also for other uh, communication technologies. And the reliability layer at the end um, does the, um, allows for efficient handshake, TLS handshakes, so that we can establish those connections. On the backend side, we have the same thing. Uh, we are just terminating the DTLS connection right in the backend, in the application layer backend. So you have end to end security from the device to your backend that is in your data center, for example. And uh, the nice thing is, we are not interested in the application data. So you just can, you can implement your own use case above the TLS layer. And you can do whatever you like, as with LoRaWAN. So um, it's, it's just an, another transparent layer in between it. Uh, what we actually have implemented as well is a secure provisioning process. So um, we are handling key management in the backend and in the devices as well. And our approach is like we provision the devices on site. So that means if a uh, device is installed um, at the customer site, then you, the keys are injected right at the customer site. Um, just to get a quick uh, overview on how, it, how or if it's feasible. So um, there are three parameters. The first one is always the use case. That's the important one. You, you want to like read the meters. You want to get data. The second one, and that was in the last talk as well, is can we run it on battery? And um, so the water utilities in Germany, they want meters to last for at least 12 years. And the third question is, uh, is the network load as, so high that it's not possible anymore, or can we handle it? Um, so th this is a rough estimation. So for one handshake, you have like one kilobyte up and down link overhead, and for each for each record, you have 35 bytes. But it can be compressed with an intelli intelligent way. But that that's pretty much the overhead we have, and it's really high. It it, it, it is an overhead, yes. But now what can we do with it? Um, so if you have a look at this regulation, it says you have to do a handshake every two days, and that seems pretty much. Uh, Unsolvable, but with our customers who are not always who are not um, interested only in security but also in privacy, um, they asked us to implement a use case which does only four readings per year, and this is feasible. So you can do it with a C cell. You can do it uh, so the net network can handle the overhead as well. And why do do they want us to do that? Only four readings. It's pretty pretty uh, pretty. Uh, yeah, it's like the, the thing they are doing right now. And that's because of the GDPR. Um, so they do not have to change the contracts. And so that's for, for them, it's an advantage. They have like 200,000 customers, and they don't want to like write a message to everyone and get in new contracts with them. So, but if we take the system and like to um, take the parameter of security to like, for example, 31 days, and um, we get uh, we get better use cases or other use cases. So, um, for example, if you only change the key every uh, month, then you can easily establish one one reading per hour, for example. And we have calculated this with a, uh, and with measurements and stuff, and the battery runtime is at least at 12 years for this use case as well. And the network load, it's, it like, it's equally distributed overhead, so it's, it's possible. Um, if you have like, detailed questions, just approach me afterwards. Um, if you go like, to one uh, key per year, then it's almost no overhead anymore. So that's pretty cool. Um, of course, this is not compliant to the regulation, but um, so there may be some use cases where this, is, this enhances the security to a, very good level, still letting you implement your use case. OK, this is like only one of our, uh, of our evaluations we have done. So this, this, is, this compares our solution with standard LoRaWAN. And you see that for a C cell, you get like 12 years, um, which is the requirement of the customer. Of course, it's, it's uh, a bit worse than LoRaWAN, because LoRaWAN, there's, there's an overhead, but it's still feasible. Um, OK. So, Christian will talk about the project then with our customer. 
Yeah, so, um, so we learned now that this is a solution which is not only technically motivated, but also motivated by the regulations. And Gelsenwasser, which is um, a group of, um, of several utilities, actually, um, and it is actually the biggest water supplier in Germany with more than 200 million um, um, cubic meter water yeah, per year. Um, they, are, they are very, very big. Huh? And um, we have a project with three phases. In the first phase, uh, we um, installed 10 gateways with uh, 50 nodes in three different cities. So not only on like very high buildings, also on buildings which are small and more representative for smaller cities in Germany. We installed uh, the water um, solutions in worst case applications in areas below the earth and really um, where the big spiders are. And uh, the same for the electric meter and um, figured out that actually solution works. In the second phase, um, we are um, doing this uh, for Gel Gelsenkirchen, which is a middle-sized city. We are using 30 gateways. This is actually the, the plan of the city, 1,000 water meter uh, using a communication box and um, evaluating um, this in, a, yeah, in this bigger case. And the third phase we are preparing is doing this for the entire city. Then we are talking about 80,000 uh, uh, 38,000 water meters. These are 2% of the meters they own. Yeah, 2%. Um, and to see how this is actually scaling in the network. So we are really um, measuring um, the real world um, packet loss, RSSI values, and so on um, from the network and compared with simulation to figure out when we have to add additional. Um, gateway somewhere uh, and so on. Because in some cells um, we have more than 3,000 um, water meters which has a single gateway as the closest gateway. <clears throat> okay. Um, so what we learned is that um, the metering uh, meter applications in Germany are highly regulated. Um, we developed together with Gelsenwasser a solution where we don't have actually a final name for. So the working title is LoRa TLS. We have to figure this out, um, which is a technical solution which approaches these regulations yeah, in, every, um, in every part of Germany. Yeah. We have different parts in Germany and they have different laws, yeah, so it's even more complicated. Yeah. And this is uh, the thing which fits for all. Yeah. And um, uh, we have uh, um, um, demonstrators, prototypes, and uh, evaluation results which demonstrates that this is feasible, feasible for a mass rollout. And we hope not only in theory, and this is what we show in practice using this huge um, um, field test. So next time we maybe talk about even other information uh, technology system or components or processes within critical infrastructures because yes in germany we have pretty much for everything a law and even if you want to do reading uh, electrical trafo station or something you have to be compliant to this kind of high security um, standards as well Thank you very much. If you have questions, write us an email. Next week at eWorld, we represent the first hardware together with Gelsenwasser and EBZ. And if you want to talk to us, we are around here also tomorrow. And you can find us in Slack by just at Fysic. Thank you very much. Give them a warm applause. They managed two of them in 15 minutes. <laughs>